Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at temporary induced dipole-dipole interactions, also known as the London Dispersion Forces, and for some courses, Van der Waals Forces. We're going to talk about what temporary induced dipole-dipole forces actually are, how they form, and look at the factors that influence their strength. Permanent dipole-dipole interactions and hydrogen bonding have been covered in separate videos, Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about induced dipole-dipole forces, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. A covalent bond is formed when two atoms share a pair of electrons. It is an example of an atomic bond. Half-filled atomic orbitals from two different atoms overlap, creating a bonding orbital that a pair of electrons can exist in. Electrons are negatively charged and the positively charged nuclei of both atoms are attracted to the increased electron density in the new bonding orbital. This pulls them closer together, forming a bond. Molecules are groups of atoms covalently bonded together in units that make up molecular substances. Intermolecular forces are forces of attraction that arise between molecules within a molecular substance. It is intermolecular forces that get broken or overcome when a molecular substance melts or boils. The stronger the intermolecular forces holding the molecules together, the higher the substance melts in a boiling point. Recap done, let's go. Temporary induced dipole-dipole interactions are the weakest type of intermolecular force and exist between all molecules. They are also referred to as London dispersion forces and Van der Waals forces. Without trying to add to confusion for you, van der Waals forces is a more general term that is sometimes also used to refer to permanent dipole-dipole interactions. Make sure you check your course and exam board for the name they prefer you to use and stick to it. For this video, they will be referred to as temporary induced dipole-dipole interactions as I think that name can help students remember and understand what's actually going on. Electrons are constantly moving very fast. Whether they're in an atomic orbital around an atom or in a bonding orbital between two atoms in a covalent bond, they are still constantly moving. The orbital shapes we draw show the area the electrons are likely to be in at any one time. They don't show where the electrons exactly are. Because of this constant movement at any one moment in time, the electrons in a covalent bond between two atoms may not be equally distributed or shared between them. If the electrons are closer to one atom more than the other, a small dipole moment will form. In chemistry, a dipole moment, often just referred to as a dipole, means two opposite charges of equal size separated by a given distance, a bit like the north and south pole of a bar magnet. The atom with more electron density around it will have a small or partial negative charge, and the atom with less electron density around it will have a small or partial positive charge. Very important to realise that the size of the partial charges are equal. They would add up to zero. Overall, the bond has no charge. The dipole created is only temporary and lasts for a very short period of time, as the electrons are constantly moving and in an instant will move again, changing the dipole. As all molecules and bonds have electrons in them, they will all have temporary dipoles at some point. If molecules are close enough to each other, a temporary dipole from one molecule can force electrons to move in another molecule and create another dipole. This is called an induced dipole as it has been forced by another temporary dipole. For example, a partially negative charged end of one molecule can repel electrons in a nearby molecule. The electrons are forced to move and this creates a new dipole, leaving the atom closest to the original partial negative charge with a partial positive charge as electrons have moved away from it. Now, for a very, very short period of time, there is a partially negative charge and a partially positive charge from different molecules very close to each other, creating a point of attraction between them. This attraction between molecules means for a very short period of time the molecules are held together. As the electrons in both molecules are constantly moving, the dipoles will change and the attraction between the molecules will end. 
However, as new dipoles and forces of attraction between other molecules are constantly being made and broken, there are many present at any one time in a molecular substance, and their combined strength can add up to sometimes hold the substance together as a liquid or solid. The larger the dipoles, the stronger the temporary induced dipole-dipole interactions between them, giving molecular substances of larger molecules higher melting and boiling points. This is because larger molecules have more electrons in them. The size of the temporary dipole that can be created is larger, leading to stronger attraction between dipoles from different molecules and higher melting and boiling points. Small molecules only have small temporary dipoles as they contain less electrons and this means they are only held together by weak temporary induced dipole-dipole interactions. Very little energy is required to overcome the attractions and this gives molecular substances made up of small molecules lower melting and boiling points. This can be seen with the halogens. Fluorine is the smallest halogen, meaning F2, a molecule of fluorine, is the smallest halogen molecule. Iodine is the largest halogen, meaning I2 is the largest halogen molecule. The boiling point of fluorine is minus 188 degrees Celsius, and the boiling point of iodine is 184 degrees Celsius. Chlorine and bromine are in the middle. But the boiling points increase with the size of the halogen molecule. As fluorine is much smaller than iodine, the temporary dipoles it can form are much smaller, giving weaker temporary induced dipole-dipole interactions between molecules that are easier to break. The iodine molecules are much larger, and this means the temporary induced dipole-dipole interactions between them are much stronger, requiring more energy to overcome, and this gives iodine a much higher boiling point. For very large molecules, like polymers and plastics, the massive area of contact between molecules means huge numbers of temporary induced dipole-dipole interactions can form at any one time, giving them high melting and boiling points. As amazing as it may sound, a plastic pen is actually held together by forces that are constantly being formed and broken. The forces keeping the plastic together are only temporary, they just get reformed so quickly between different molecules that the plastic stays together. So, to summarise, electrons are constantly moving and this means temporary dipoles can be formed across covalent bonds and molecules. Charged regions in a molecule can repel or attract electrons in another molecule, causing the other molecule to also have a dipole. We say a dipole has been induced. The oppositely charged regions of different molecules will be attracted to each other only for a very short period of time as the dipoles are only temporary. These forces of attraction are called temporary induced dipole-dipole interactions, London dispersion forces, or a type of van der Waals force. They are the weakest type of intermolecular force and exist between all molecules in all molecular substances. The strength of the forces depend on the size of the atoms or molecules involved. Larger atoms and molecules have more electron density, meaning larger dipoles can be formed, leading to stronger forces of attraction between molecules, and this means more energy is required to overcome the forces, giving these substances higher melting and boiling points. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below, and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.